<laughs> Welcome to Film Right Mondays, which is actually Tuesday, because things happen. If you didn't know, last week we announced a new Monday challenge. It is back. You're not too late. You have until March 31st to join in on the fun. So definitely check out last week's episode to get all the details on that. But now, let's get into some questions. As once before, but I just wanted to double check. Is it acceptable for me to hang a degree certificate from Film Riot University in my office? I literally learned everything from there. Funny enough, we are actually working on releasing something this summer called Film Riot University. Okay, it's driving me nuts. Can you fix your hoodie lace thing? The, the string? Yeah, that has been driving me nuts. How's that? It's, I mean, they're super twirly and it's... You got an iron? I really need to fix that. Mm, how's that? But like I was saying, we are working on something called Film Right University, which probably isn't going to be exactly what you have in your head from me saying that, but we do think you guys are really going to dig it. But to answer your question, you can put whatever you want on your wall. It's a free country, as long as you know that it doesn't actually mean anything other than the fact that I love you. Bunches. When working with another artist on the project, what is the best way to contribute when you both have different visions for a particular scene or for the film as a whole without offending the other or causing a rift? Usually when I collaborate with people, I like to make sure that there's one captain of the ship. If it's not me, then it's the other guy or girl. And it's their story in the end, so they're the final yes or no. So even when I've written with other people, is this theirs or is this mine? Uh, yes, we're collaborating. Yes, we both have ownership, but in the end, there's one captain of the ship. And uh, when it's not mine, if I, when I'm not the captain of the ship, I submit to their ultimate say. If they say no at the end of the day, even though we've talked it out and at the end they think, no, this is the best way to go, then there you go. That's the best way to go. And now we go down that path. When it's a 50-50 thing, that's a lot more difficult. You just have to make sure to leave your ego at the door. I mean, you should always be doing that in any circumstance artistically. That just gets in the way. You shouldn't be wanting something to be a certain way just because you're the one that said it and you said it's right, so it has to be right. You should be totally happy with being wrong and the people you collaborate should do the same. And if you create that atmosphere where it's okay to be wrong and no one's feeling stupid for admitting uh, being wrong in any particular idea, you should be able to find your way uh, into uh, a healthy collaboration. But I think it's also really important to have discussions about what the scene's actually about, not just what's on the page. What is it that you're saying to your audience, what you want them to feel, and then build everything else uh, on top of that. If you can agree on that backbone, then you should be able to come to an agreement on how you actually get to that end result. Hey Rye Guy, what is the one film you are most excited to see this year? I feel like this year is not too dissimilar from last year, whereas last year we had an unbelievable amount of amazing films. Some of my favorite films that I've seen in the past five to 10 years came out last year. So I'm really excited about this year because it seems like we might be getting a lot of the same in that respect. Uh, so it's hard to boil down to just one, but if I had to pick one, because I'm such a huge Ridley Scott and Alien fan, I would probably say Alien Covenant. Is photography a good way to get started with learning how to make films or should I dive right into filmmaking? I think anything within the creative arts is a great uh, thing to dive into if you're interested because that's gonna help shape how you tell a story, whether it's photography, drawing, music, whatever, acting before you get behind the camera, whatever it is, I think all these things will help inform who you are as an artist. So if you're interested in any form of creative art, I say dive in, go crazy, learn as much as you can while doing filmmaking as well. But photography is really great, especially if you're trying to be a cinematographer because you really dial in on just that one image, one frame instead of 24 per second to you know, concentrate on what story is this frame telling? What is the light doing in this frame? What is my composition of just this one frame? And that really helps you flush out the concepts of those visual ideas. So if you're wanting to do cinematography or directing even, I think it's a great idea to dive into photography. Last question, how to go about structuring a short film? Structure is an interesting thing for me. When it comes to long format stuff, I think I do adhere more to traditional ideas of structure because there's just so much happening that you need some kind of organization and management of this story to help wrangle it all together. So I think I do sort of consciously think about that stuff when it comes to more long format writing. But with short films, I don't think I ever think in terms of like a traditional three act structure. And of course, there's tons of films that absolutely explode the idea of a three act structure. But the concepts of that, I think, are still found in those. For me, when I'm writing a short film, I don't think of it in terms of a three act structure. 
um, not consciously at least, maybe just instinctually or from experience that finds its way in, I don't know. But the things that I'm thinking about are setups and payoffs uh, and peaks and valleys. You have your beginning and middle and end. And, and what I mean by peaks and valleys is like say with an action scene, you don't wanna constantly be at a 10 with the action or eventually it's gonna start getting boring and not exciting anymore. You gotta bring it back down before you bring it back up. That same concept exists with comedy, with drama. You can't just have two people yelling at each other for five minutes, it'll lose its potency uh, and its effect on its audience. So you need to bring it down so you can bring it back up, raise the stakes. And by setups and payoffs, uh, in the most simplistic terms, it's like Aaron Sorkin said, if there's a gun in act three, you need to introduce it in act one. But it's the same thing with jokes. You can't have a punchline without the setup to that punchline. And that again, it goes across genre. So you can't have that really dramatic moment without setting up why that's so dramatic for that character. You can't just introduce something where the character's crying for no reason, we're not gonna feel anything. So when I'm writing, that's how I'm thinking. I'm thinking in terms of peaks and valleys, and I'm thinking in terms of setups and payoffs to get my audience where I want them to be with this experience. Not so much a traditional structure. Working in the film industry is an exciting and rewarding experience. If you know you wanna be a part of it, but you don't know where to begin, you should check out Full Sail University. Full Sail's film bachelor degree program emerges you in the world of filmmaking from every angle. You'll gain hands-on experience while learning what it's like to work on a film from start to finish, giving you a feel for the role each crew member plays in production. The digital cinematography online degree program merges the artistic concepts of traditional filmmaking with the technical tools used in everything from documentary filmmaking to commercial production and and web video. Or maybe you already have film experience and you're ready to take your skills to the next level. You can build a graduate level portfolio all while perfecting your technique in the film graduate degree program. Full Sail grads have gone on to work on films and TV shows like Doctor Strange, Star Trek Beyond, Captain America Civil War, and The Walking Dead, just to name a few. And if you want to find out more about these film programs and how to get started, visit fullsail.edu forward slash film riot. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. This one's called Transmissions from Iceland, which is another one from Ryan Booth and Jordy Wax. Definitely check it out right here. It is absolutely gorgeous. The landscape is just amazing, and it's a great mini doc as well. So check that out. And until next week, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.